Let me ask you about uh, Charlie Murphy. Like when you first uh, seen him, because I know it had to hurt you being that y'all had a history when you seen him. It, it was on. It was on. Was it on Empire? Where, where, where did we see him when he 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 had start losing weight? Mm-hmm. Was that on? That was on. Well, it was. It was, it was yeah, on so Power it, or it, Empire. Where was it at? I don't remember the show. It was on but Empire. Know, but you could see him in those episodes and you knew that he was going and, through that health And it was, it was crisis. kept very quiet yeah. with, his, with his illness, but anybody behind the scenes would know. So, yeah. So that's, you know. Then, so you knew about it way before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew that he was sick, and, and but then they kept it even, you know, they kept it real low key. You know, we didn't know, nobody knew that it was terminal. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. So that's how comedy came about. I moved from the East Coast to the West Coast because my family moved out there. Okay. So when I moved to the West Coast, it was, you know, when you grow up in New York, you know, people think that, right? New Yorkers are just cocky and arrogant. It's not that. You go to New and York. mean. Well, look, if you, if you take you here, even here or, 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 or Arizona, they don't know what a Jamaican is. They know mm-hmm. the island for mm-hmm. vacation. Like New York have it ever. But, but I was dating Caribbean women, Guyanese, Jamaican. You go out to, to, to Arizona, that's where I ended up moving to. You don't learn that. You don't Ain't learn what, you, you don't you don't know anything about a Jamaican. Right. You don't know anything about curry chicken and the, that great food <laughs> and oxtails. You know, you learn you learn that, you know, you learn that on the New York side, on the big city side. So when I did that, I would see how they treat whites and Mexicans. They like the whites really shitted on Mexicans in Arizona. Right. And it was not it wasn't a prejudice. It, it, it was kind of a, it was a self ignorance of not mm. wanting to know the difference, and I don't, I don't fault people for that. You know, there's there's those people, KKK people, they believe in that. But when you take, you know, you move around the country, you don't realize that the reason why we're so divided is not that we're divided; is what we grow up to know. Some so, things are embedded in and, them. And, and I've learned that in comedy. I go to different cities. Right now, I'm the only Hispanic comic. Right, and I say Hispanic. Because it's different than Mexican. But I'm the only Hispanic comic on the urban circuit that travels and works with the comics that I do. Mm-hmm. That's what I was going to ask you. Like, how did you even get to, uh, how did you know that you could appeal to the crowds that you appealed because to? Because I, I, I grew up in New York. That New York comedy, uh, some of the, you know, some of the OGs, uh, uh, talent, uh, Rob Stapleton, A.G. White, you know, Mike Troy, these guys out of New York. They were some of the pioneers. They were on the Def Jams. They were on the Bad Boys of Comedy. And you traveled with some of these people? Well, I, I grew up in comedy, but I had to come back to them. Oh, okay. Because I started in Arizona because I wanted to be funny, and I loved those guys. Who was the first person you went on tour with? My first person I, the first person I went, went on, on the road ever with. on the road with was mm-hmm. Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy. What? Wow, rest in peace. Charlie Murphy, rest well, in how peace. How did you even link with Charlie? Well, Charlie's family, so... If you know about the Murphys, Eddie, Eddie mm-hmm. and Charlie grew up in Roosevelt, New York. Right. I grew up in Uniondale, New York. Um, their cousin Rich went to school with my younger brother, and I knew Uncle Ray. Rest in peace, Uncle Ray. Uncle Ray, I met because that was community based. So I knew Uncle Ray was was Eddie's uncle, and then Uncle Ray was in all the Eddie Murphy movies. He always did cameos and roles, and. Um, I got my first opportunity from Rich to, wow. to perform with Charlie. Wow. And then... Um, and you learned a lot from him. Well, I, you know, I just learned, I just, you got to be a student of the game. You know, we were having this conversation about why older comics don't respect. Right. It's not that we don't respect them. It's hard for, that's like in any profession, right? So you guys have a podcast, right? And, and however long you've been having it. Two years. Yeah. We've only been around two, so years. two years. Quick. So now there's Quick. somebody that had a podcast that's been doing it for 10 years might be like, oh, y'all a baby. Y'all only yeah. been doing it two yeah. years. You yeah. guys haven't. Yeah. So We're that's how it is with comedy. In the beginning, I thought I was I was funny. I used to do a lot of, try to do skit comedy. I used to wear outfits. I always had to come out to music. But I was so attracted to, I grew up in a minority community. Right. So I was always into um, diversity because I knew whites, I knew blacks, I knew Hispanics, but we just saw each other together as growing up. Mm -hmm. So in comedy, that's how it really is. So I used to fly from Arizona to New York on my own dime just to do shows and open mics in New York. Because that's a hard crowd. Yeah. You know, because if I do it on the West Coast, I'm doing, 
I call it chancleta. That's the George Lopez of comedy. That's that Mexican comedy. I don't know what that is. Yeah. You know, I was... I so was, your comedy changes depends on what city you're going to. Well, what, or how you grow up. Well, my comedy? Yes, your comedy. Well, be, well there's comedy called... Like, I can do mainstream. Mainstream is white comedy. Like, yeah. You do that with, with white folks and what they like to listen to. You know, then you do urban comedy. Urban comedy, you gotta yeah. know... Yeah. You know, I'm... I, you know, like, people... You know, I... I say it, it to me is not disrespectful. I grew up with it, you know. I'm like, yo, my nigga, what's up? But that's how Puerto Ricans are. Puerto Ricans are light skinned black. That's how I grew up. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife, all my kids are half black. My wife, my ex wife, and my wife are black. You know, so I grew up, you know, that diverse learning that. You know, and then urban comedy to me, I grew up with the Def Jam era. I grew up with the, you know, I, you know, my my mentors was always you know Red Fox, Eddie, man, uh, uh, you know, you you know. Those sitcoms, you know, and so I networked to do urban comedy. Then I would meet some of the, you know, all these comics that are, I call them the real comics. Because I'm like, you know, of course, I, I travel with great and, and perform with great comics. But the real comics are the ones that pay their rent doing comedy, comedy, doing $50 shows, doing three shows a night in different parts of the city, five nights a week just to pay their rent. You know, and they're funny, but they don't really ever make it right. to that point where they could do a weekend in these comedy clubs because it's a whole political thing. Let me ask you about uh, Charlie Murphy. Like when you first uh, seen him, because I know it had to hurt you being that y'all had a history when you seen him. It, it was on. It was on. Was it on Empire? Where, where, where did we see him when he 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 had started losing weight? Mm -hmm. Was that on? That was on. Well, it was. It was, it was yeah, on so Power it, or Empire. Where was it at? I don't remember the show. Was on Empire. But, I know, I but remember, you could see him in those episodes and you knew that he was going and, through that health And it was, it was crisis. kept very quiet yeah. with, his, with his illness, but anybody behind the scenes would know. So, yeah. So that's, you know. Then, so you knew about it way before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew that he was sick, and, and but then they kept it even, you know, they kept it real low key. You know, we didn't know, nobody knew that it was terminal. Terminal. Because they just kept that really hush-hush. Yeah. So, and then I moved on, you know, actually he, he took me off the road. He did. Because he had another comic that was opening for him, his regular guy, and he and I was a little similar. Okay. But then we ended up doing a show. We ended up back in Phoenix, and I was going crazy. You know, like, I didn't know. You, you got to, and, and I won't say that this is really what happened, but you got to know your role when you're opening comedian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The show's not for me. My job is strictly to open up the crowd to get ready for the headline. Get them warned up. Yeah, and that's hard for. But you learned that job. over time, right? Well, you learned. You learn how to deal with it over but time because if that's the way. You, there's etiquette to this. Yeah, you know, there's that's that's why comics that have come up the long way, they don't they struggle with some of these comics that want to get that instant fame. There's no such thing as instant fame. You got to be funny wherever you are. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.